Ah, loot crates and other such subscription boxes. They're a very popular thing, as you're probably aware, Mr. Solomon. Yes. People will give money to these people who will then send boxes of random tat every month. And you very kindly prepared one for me. Not so long ago. Yes. Well, I've made one for you now, so uh, you won't be doing that when you see what's in it. Bartians! They're always a bit generic, aren't they? It's like, oh, there's a load of superhero stuff. Yeah. And most of the YouTubers get paid for showing them, so they pretend they're great. We know who you are. <laughs> so, I've presented a personalised edition. Ah. So this is actually an Eli crate. That looks very enticing. So this is the Eli crate. It's 100% shard free, and that's a guarantee. Okay. Uh, it brings joy to silver men. Which that includes me, I'm in that set. Absolutely. And uh, noodles not included. You do have to supply your own noodles. But, uh, uh, I mean... well, well, if I give this to you, please have a look inside, see what's in. All I really know is that you like music and weird shit. Here we go. So, uh, we've got some nice packing here. I can yep. see something. I'm just going to go for the first thing I see. It's a Marushka doll. Look at that. And uh, inside is another smaller Marushka doll. And inside that, it's uh, another smaller one, and inside that, another smaller one. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how they work. That's really. how they work. Yeah. Do you already own a set of those? I certainly do not. Hey, called it. And I'd like to point out how the outer one is a different colour to the inner ones because it's been on somebody's shelf for, like, decades. Apparently, I heard that they're not as um, traditionally Russian as was once supposed. Or really? generally supposed. Yeah, introduced in the early 20th century, apparently. Oh! <laughs> Right, you're going to be picking that up for ages. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. It's one of those little devil men made out of junk. I like the way you said that as if that's a whole range of them. I, I, that's probably a one-off, surely. I've seen similar items. I can believe that, actually. It's made with a little toilet tube there, and yeah. uh, he's got a nut for a head, a little bended screw for arms and legs, and some kind of uh, Allen key shaped into his sickle. That's very nice there. That's very good. What else have we got in here? Look at this! It's Rocky 3! From the weird <laughs> training montage in Rocky 3. You've got Apollo Creed, right? Yeah. And Rocky, and they're jumping up and down like wusses with their yep. short tank tops. That was specially made by an artist. Not for you, I just bought it off. It's very good. I like that a lot. Um, they're both doing star jumps and Prancing, I think this is the word. That and, is exactly uh, right. Could be mincing, but I think mostly prancing. Prancing, a bit of mincing. You could make a mince. Ah. Or some other kind that's of... That's play thing. value. That's a very interesting item. Um, paint could be... Uh, could be have been applied better. It's a bit flaky. Well, that it? is true. That is true. What else but I think that adds there? to the charm. Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> to go on your noodles. Look, it's some armour potted meat. And that was specially procured, and in no way did somebody send it to my P.O. box years ago, and I found it under a Welsh dresser. That just didn't happen. It's made with chicken, pork yeah. added. So yeah. you start with chicken, and then you get a big syringe, no, put you, the pork you in. feed the pig to the chicken. Ah, oh, is that how it's done? Yeah. Ingredients. It, you know you're in for a quality item when the first word in ingredients is mechanically. Ooh. <laughs> mechanically derived water. Mechanically probably. separated. Chicken. Partially deflated cooked pork fatty tissue. Oh my God, it's really... Right. Yep. Okay. Only partially deflated. <laughs> it's still slightly balloon-like. <laughs> it's been let down a bit, this pork. <laughs> yeah. Right, that's a great item, thank you. I'm you really enjoying welcome. the box so far. There's a large item now. This may be the pièce de résistance. It's a fine metal photo frame. It's been hand-polished, yep. as indeed all my photo frames, uh, and lacquer-coated. I think this is something you will thoroughly enjoy. <laughs> Tosh from the bill, that's a, that is beautiful. I yep. love this sort of... The uh, late lamented actor Kevin Lloyd. Thank you. Uh, this has uh, got a lovely sort of faux Art Nouveau finish. That would be a great item in anyone's tap Absolutely. box. Anyone's. Absolutely. Where else have we got in here? Don't tell him, Pike. It's a coaster based yep. on Dad's Army. Absolutely. Dad's Army used to come on when I was a child and I used to think, fucking hell, I want to kill myself. So we've got a few more items in here. Oh, yep. A couple of CDs. Adam's Family Values. On video CD. See, Does I know you like redundant formats, so that seemed like quite a good one. That is a very redundant format. Mm. I have I have literally no clue how I would uh, play that. A, modern, a computer would, if you've got a computer with a CD drive. No. Oh. <laughs> 
Well, because Paul advised me. I was looking for a computer. I thought Paul's tech savvy. You know, I was going to buy my first laptop. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is a good one. What doesn't have a CD drive, Paul? Doesn't matter. It's you'll be fine. It's like he wasn't thinking about Adam's family values at all. <laughs> I've yeah. seen that coming. Yeah, I could have watched this. I, I could have enjoyed advice. this. Now he's going to have to watch it on DVD where it's twice the quality and he doesn't have to swap discs. Yeah. How, what experience is that going to be for him? This is the sequel to The Addams Family. It is. And is it considered to be a better? Is it one of those? It's considered to be as good, although it does repeat a large amount of the first film in that it's a woman trying to sort of steal away Uncle Fester. It's very odd that both the films have the have same plot. Idea. Anyway, that's good. And what else have we got in here? Oh yeah, Delta Accordion Band, 50 party favourites. Straight from Poundland. It's a sin to tell a lie. That's not a party favourite, I don't know what the fuck that is. So what parties you've been to, mate? <laughs> you are my sunshine, everyone knows that. Yeah. The Blackpool Bell. Ding-a-ling? Ding-a-ling? So the Blackpool Bell goes, do you ring it? Do you know what song that is? No. No, thank you. <laughs> the Wild Colonial Boy. Christ, this is so World War II. Yeah. Coming through the rye. Theresa May song. <laughs> there are some very obscure party favourites on this. Oh, yeah, Maybe I... it's because I'm a Londoner. Oi! Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? Knees up, Mother Brown. Roll me over, the last one is. Roll me over! I'm done! I'd like to know what party <laughs> these were taken from. There's a song on here called Muir Sheen Durkin. Party classic? I don't think so. Anyway, good item, that. Nice. <laughs> Well, and finally, final the item. pièce de résistance. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I actually do want this. Then that <laughs> is yours. Thank you. It is Star Trekking by the firm on Picture Disc. Oh. <laughs> the most redundant 80s item I could find. That is redundant. However, I ha own a vinyl player. I'll be able to uh, play it, which I won't do because no, it's awful. It is awful, yes. Uh, if you don't know Star Trek, and it was a Star Trek novelty single. There's Klingons off the starboard bow, starboard bow, starboard bow. There's Klingons off the starboard bow. This song goes on forever. It was a, a phenomenally popular record when I was at school. Everyone yep. would do it. They'd come on Klingons off the starboard bow and then they'd fucking hit you or something. <laughs> really? Yeah. We kind of only had the first bit. Well, this is a really refreshing take on the loot crate uh, box genre, Stuart. Good. And I think, you know, it's a... Uh, it's been designed personally for me. I feel warmth, <laughs> and it's a great idea. We could start, you know, you just I'm have ready to... for mass production. They will be released uh, within 12 days, and they cost £25 each, including postage to anywhere in the world. And what, you will just do it for anyone? You, you'd have to do some research on people uh, to No, they're actually it. all going to be this exactly the same stuff. Ah. Well, there's certainly a very uh, large supply of armor potted meat. Yeah, that was easy. Uh, this is a bit of a one-off, the Rocky... Well, we've got a load of kids in Malaysia, they'll sort it. Do you know what's, what's crap about this? Everything. It's like one of those, that crown, where it's like, keep calm and carry on, yeah. but it's don't tell him, Pike. Yeah, it's... they had a couple that worked, and, but it was a set of four, and they got increasingly worse, and that was the worst one, for it doesn't work in context at all. It's just terrible. Mm. And this also... I mean, that's nice. It's nice. Yeah, everybody wants a tosh in their home. <laughs> right, is that the end of this video? I don't know. I think it is. So, I've seen Eli's box, and I was very impressed by it. As well you should be. And now we have the Gannon crate. Now, this was slightly more easier, I found, because uh, I just got you a load of Ghostbusters shit. <laughs> yeah. I might ejaculate, then. I'm going to shift over here slightly. <laughs> OK. And then offer you this box. I ain't afraid of no Gannon crate. That's the double negative I like to hear. It's a much better box, by the way, than E-Life, so I appreciate that touch. That's because I need the wider one for yours. Okay, right, here we go. Oh, now, this is a Slimer. And what's interesting about this is that this is the Extreme Ghostbusters Slimer, uh, taken from the Extreme Ghostbusters cartoon series, which ran in the 90s, I do believe. Mate. All correct, and it's from Burger King. I was going to say, it looks like a Burger King toy, because it's got, it's got a top thing going on, so I imagine it, when it gets its force up, it brings its arms out. Yeah. And it goes... 
Everything true apart from that last bit. No, which, no, the uh, uh, worry thing is Fine. the bit that... Can I just... I know we can't see it, but... I... <laughs> um, we can work out the kinks to that one, I think. Wow, my God. Well, it's, it's like he's here in the room with us. For me, you can't have too many Slimers as a Ghostbuster collector. I have about 20 Slimers of different types, <laughs> genuinely. Um, anything from weird little candy uh, sweet boxes. Oh, uh, like, yeah. Because he was the, the focus of the cartoon in the late days, I believe. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. When they started doing audience research to how popular Ghostbusters is, uh, the Ghostbusters themselves came quite low down on the popularity scale. And uh, Slimer <laughs> was at the top. We're just watching it for the Slimer. So that's why during the late 80s, early 90s series, before it was cancelled, it became Slimer and the real Ghostbusters. I and there was a whole that. segment of Slimer at the Cedric Hotel having wacky scrapes. And then it would go, oh shit, it's a Ghostbusters episode and then doing a separate Ghostbusters thing at the end. So there you go. Also, they re they changed the character of uh, Janine completely because in the first 70 odd episodes, spunky, feisty Janine, and then it was like, no, she needs to be more feminine and go, what's that a lot to Egon? So they changed her and made her a, a lesser character of agency, which is a shame. Next, did I say I know a lot about Ghostbusters? Did I'm I beginning to that? regret this already. Did I mention it? Right, here we go. Oh. Oh, that's that a was ghost a good find, that one. That's a Ghostbusters yo-yo. <laughs> or yo's. Collect all these yo's. They do tricks and stunts. Look, I want to have a go of it, but I never want to take it out of this, because... Oh, you should. It's a toy. No, I know, but it's, it's mint in box. It's got a Ghostbusters logo, which... Can I give you a little bit of nerdy information about Ghostbusters oh, logo? Oh, sure you will. Shut up. So, you know, the logo goes like that way, and it kind of goes down yeah. in that direction. That's not the right way. <gasps> Michael C. Gross designed it for the British way of the no entry sign and it should be slow, sloping in the opposite direction. However, with most licensing, it ended up just being that way anyway. My so. God, how incredibly uninteresting. <laughs> <laughs> Boring! So, that's amazing. You also get an earth, a, a, a leaping lizard, a curveball and have a blast, which is a grenade. That's nice. So, so you look like you're killing people when so you're playing with a yo-yo. You could be a child running around with what looks like a grenade in your hand and the police will not shoot at you in America. What could possibly go wrong? Everything. Instructions. Loop the end of the string as shown, fig one. There is only one fig. Um, place around the first joint of middle finger. It's a yo-yo. Everyone knows about this. Did I ask for your opinion? If the tension is proper, it will sleep or spin at the end of the string. All right, okay, Jesus. Next. Next. There is more stuff in there. Oh. I regret it, but I promise. There's a little red man. Yeah. Oh, no, that is uh, the bad guy from the Ghostbusters 2016 movie who I've forgotten the name of because he wasn't a well-written character. Most people have forgotten this character's name. Does, his, does it say anything on his arse? No. <laughs> Most people have their information on their arses. <laughs> it... Blame Funko Pops. Oh. I used to have this when I was a kid and I lost it forever and I was sad and now I've got a new version of it. Oh, it's a Ghostbusters book. Featuring the ugly little Spud. Yeah, before he was called Slimer. Well, but in, yeah. mm, 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 oh God, no, no, well no, he was no. known Slimer, but that was only in the animated series. In the film, he's actually called Onion Head. That was the name of the coast. If you look at the title sequence, it says Onion Ghost or Onion Head. Uh, that was the name of the character. <gasps> I used to have this book. Oh, and it's got lines that were never actually in the film in here as well. Yeah. Like at the end when someone says, is everyone okay? Peter says, anyone got a large cup of hot chocolate? Do you remember that fascinating bloody line from the film? Remember that when it's up there with the with the greats? Like what is is where's that other line I like in here? <sighs> We're the Ghostbusters, says Ray. We're gonna turn you into toast. All the greatest lines. Right, next one. <gasps> it's another Ghostbusters book, Lost in Foundry. This is a fascinating one because this one actually, oh no. Well, I need to point a few mistakes out. So <laughs> what? There are a few mistakes. The book, the episode itself is a good episode. A ghost falls into an iron foundry and then becomes part of the metalwork in New York and all, all, everything in America comes possessed. However, on the front cover, the episode is from a different episode where it takes the secret, it basically fills in what happens at the end of the first movie and then folds it into the narrative of the animated series where the original suits become possessed by evil Gozer Goop and the suits attack the Ghostbusters, which is why they have to get the all new suits because the old ones are, what? This is salient information and Ghostbusters fans will be welcome to hear it again. Next thing. <laughs> it's loads of comic books by Marvel. Because I believe in America there was wow comics or fun comics. Um, someone will correct me in the comments below. <laughs> but, uh, well, no one's watching. Yeah. Marvel. 
Grr, this doesn't happen. Egon gets possessed by a monster. That tends to happen. Boo! Ghosts say that. Fact. And e um, Ray says, why am I feeling... You got me this box. You can't complain that you're unimpressed. This is great. I used to have these, and then they all got lost in the great comic book purge of 1991. Oh, and it's got a story in here. Dead true, a ghost story. There's a letter to Peter. You can write to Peter Venkman. Dear Peter, I like your comic very much. I have a few questions. Did Slimer eat a lot when he was alive? Yes. Do you... <laughs> Do you often get calls at midnight? Yes. <laughs> Very good question. The man of few words, Venkman, wasn't he? Not as witty as he was in the movie. No, there's one more item there's in one there, more item. I believe. No, there's two. Oh. Oh, yeah. No, there's three. There's three. Oh, you... oh, you... No Death Stars patch. In Star Port... Wars crossover. Crossover. It's like that one where you see um, General Akbar holding a Ghostbusters trap, and he says, it's a trap. Great stuff. He's an admiral. So if you're against big military weapon compound places, this is the sign for you. And um, I ain't afraid of no ghost. A nice pin badge. And finally, oh, it's your little Egon Spengler from the blind bag. That looks like Beaker. He looks like Beaker from uh, The Muppet Show. And I don't understand why, but he's got a PKE meter. Movie reference to the movie. Yeah, it's nice. It's all nicely done. Yes, this is, this is a quality pack of stuff. And I've enjoyed thoroughly rooting through it thank you you are most welcome i'm glad it was so exciting for all of us well i certainly ejaculated eli four or five times why didn't you warn me <laughs> he's really mean? into ghostbusters ultimately i'm pleased with the way this video's turned out <laughs> what kill me now <laughs>